Welcome to Two Cents Worth. I am your host, Ryan DeFaber. Before we get to the show, as always, we would like for you to like, share, comment on the podcast. It helps us grow. It helps us reach out to the wider community that we are trying to impact with the stories that uh, I bring to you on mostly a weekly basis. So without further ado, on to the show. Welcome to Two Cents Worth. I am your host, Ryan DeFaber. It has been a while. I've taken a break. Most of November, all of December off from the podcast. Uh, But we are back. It is January. It is the new year. Welcome to 2024, everybody. I hope 2023 was successful for you, that there was more ups than there were downs. Uh, Certainly in my life, I looked at 2023 and... Yes, as is life, because life is tough, but you only get one shot at it, so you might as well look at the positives, understand that there's going to be negatives, understand that there's going to be downs. But I looked at 2023, there were a lot of downs, but there was more ups. Uh, From personal life, to professional life, to friendships, to family, way more ups than there were downs. You were able to get through the downs. Because you are built strong and remember that nothing is put in front of you that you cannot get through. I promise you that. And that is something that I certainly live by is though it might be difficult in the time you were built to get through it. You were not put in these positions to ultimately fail. It might feel like that in the beginning or during it. But every day you get through it. Every morning you wake up, you get to wake up, you get to do these things, you get to live life. You have one shot at it. Live it to your fullest. That is what I'm going to continue to work on this year in 2024 is living my life to the fullest, being present, having an impact, being impactful for my life, being more intentional in what I'm doing for my family, for my friends, for my work, for those around me, for those of that don't I don't know, right? Those of you that might listen to this podcast that I've never met before, um, providing messages and living my life and, and really changing and continuing to work on my mindset of understanding you have one shot at this. Enjoy it. Make the best of it. Make the most of it. Be intentional. Be in the moment. So... That's how we're going to kick off 2024. Uh, I have some things we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the break, the holidays, being sick during the holidays. Once again, the bug hit the family. I feel like it's almost every other year in this household during uh, the holiday break of Christmas and New Year. We get hammered. The kids bring something home from school, and it it wipes us out. And that's what happened this year. We battled through. We stayed positive through it. There were some bad days, but uh, ultimately we got through it, and we're, we're on the up now from being sick. What do I want to accomplish for 2024? Um, turning 40 this year. I've talked about some of those things quite a bit last year. Working on planning a 40th birthday trip with myself, uh, my wife, who is turning 40 this year. My best friend Matt is turning 40 this year. His wife is turning 39, but we're going to include Ashley into this celebration and any of our friends who want to join us for that. So I've already started that planning, that spreadsheet. If you know me, I talk about planning trips a lot around golf trips and vacations and things like that. The spreadsheet is currently up. 
It is filling up of different places, locations. Um, the trip is going to be revolving around for the ladies, a spa, something to do. We're not going to go to a place to where you, you just don't have anything to do and it's secluded and isolated. Things to do, activities for the men. We want to golf. That's ultimately what it comes down to. I'd golf every single day on the trip if we're going to be allowed to. So we're going to find somewhere that we can all agree upon. Um, we all have an equal vote of the four of us, even Ashley, who's not turning 40, but she's going to get a vote there. And then finally, I was asked by one of my friends during our New Year's Eve party, what do you want to start, what do you want to stop, and what do you want to continue for 2024? I've never been asked that question. I thought it was a really good question. I answered it very quickly, which now I'm giving it more thought, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, my answer is more sarcastic and smart assy. Shockingly enough, if you don't know me, that is my personality. And the response was basically what I said was bullshit. You're going to do that, which was why I said it. Cause it was funny. Um, so anyways, let's get to the break. So the break was good. Break was good for the family. It was good. I took the week off the last week of the year. Lindsay did the same thing. She worked on the Friday before New Year's. But we got to take the week off. We got to decompress, kind of relax. Unfortunately, two days before the break started, Nolan comes home and has a fever has a fever, right? He doesn't come home from it, but Friday, he was fine. Saturday wakes up. He's like complaining that his head hurts. We think maybe he's just dehydrated and drink enough water. Well, Friday, Saturday night comes around. Sunday, he's got a fever. Monday, Tuesday, he's got a fever. This dude's out. So like, okay, well, we hope it doesn't hit the rest of the family. I believe it was Thursday of that, that week. Um, I'm sitting here working. No, it was Wednesday. I'm sitting here working, and I'm like, mm. <clears throat> oh, man, I got a tickle in my throat. I'm like, shoot, here it comes for me. Um, and ultimately, I never got a fever, but I was real dizzy. Never had that feeling before. Like, if I would be, like, looking down, I'd look up. Like, I'd get, like, a little, I'd get dizzy. And there's no other way of explaining it. Lightheaded. Uh, worked out, didn't stop working out through the whole thing. But ultimately, what I think what happened was then it, it then turned into a sinus infection. I just finally finished my antibiotics. I get sinus infections a lot. Frustrating, but that is what the body is. Always try and combat it as best as I possibly can. But thankfully, I was able to get antibiotics and kind of work itself out. It's still here a little bit, as you might hear, a little nasally. Um, but I'm feeling way better. Uh, but then it hits Harrison. Nolan's getting, Nolan gets better. Then it hits Harrison. Thankfully, Lindsay was about the only one in the family that didn't get it. Uh, her brother was here during that break as well. He didn't get sick. So it just hit the three of us. It hit us hard. Um, I will say though, during the break, it was nice to get some more sleep because I took the last week off of the year. I just ended up working out at the house, didn't go to the gym, wasn't waking up at four, wasn't feeling great anyways. So like, not having to wake up at four and being able to sleep in was great during the break. And I'm looking at it right now. Um, and then I'll share some pictures of it when I post this, that, uh, my dad and I built a new coffee table for my office slash bonus room. We've had a Ikea coffee table in here for years. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it, right? It serves its purpose, but it was boring. It's not, anything exciting and I like to build things. Um, I kind of get into this every once in a while to where I like to build certain things. I built the TV console that is in the bonus room slash office. Now the coffee table is in here as well. I've built our bookshelf that's out in the hallway and all of it is mid-century modern influenced. Um, so <clears throat> you'll see that in the pictures when I post them with this podcast, but you know, that was the break. And then we ended it with Christmas was great. Celebrated with our families, um, uh, was able to do that. 
even though everyone wasn't feeling great, but we, we battled through as we always do. Kids are resilient anyways. Like in all reality, like I think if anybody felt the worst, it was probably me, but I'm old enough to just deal with it. Uh, the kids are resilient. You wouldn't even know they were sick. You, you probably knew that I was sick, you know, the man flu. Uh, definitely, I'm not like that uh, to where, you know, I, I need to be, like, bedridden and, oh, what was me? I try everything to do to combat it, whether it's taking supplements like zinc and magnesium and vitamin C and emergency to drinking reduced raspberry juice because the antioxidants, all of this stuff I'll try, you know, honey with milk, anything. Um as well as modern medicine and antibiotics, and eventually I, I, I succumb to the antibiotics because if that doesn't all work out, that's, that's just where I go. So we celebrated Christmas with family. It was fantastic. Boys got good presents. You know, my big gift this year for, for Christmas was my truck, my 2024 Tundra. Um, so it was just a nice, simple Christmas, and it was really nice. Then we ended the year with a New Year's party where we had friends over. We celebrated that. We had a great time. Uh, I will say the following day wasn't the first day of the year wasn't great. Maybe had, maybe was a little overserved in my own house. Um, but regardless, it's always great to have that fellowship and have friends around and, and and really enjoyed that. And so, starting off the year. You know, the first day wasn't great, but we took down all the decorations. We did accomplish some things. Wasn't feeling the best, but next morning, Tuesday, back to work, back to the gym, back to the grind, right? And that's how I always look at things when it comes to starting the year off. It's not, you know, oh, okay, now I'm starting the year off. Now I'm going to start doing these things. Right, we're going to get into the start, stop, continue. From a health perspective and a and a lifting and gym perspective, that doesn't stop. Right, that hasn't stopped for years. Certain routines have stopped. Right, I've talked about the injuries with my foot and running. Definitely want to try and get back into that more. Want to get more consistent cardio in to continue with the cardiovascular health, my heart health, making sure I'm taking care of my body and. As I now move towards 40 here this year in eight months' time, August, uh, I will be turning 40. I want to ensure as I get into my 40s that I ha- I continue my good habits of my health, whether it's you know making sure my diet is more on point, um, making sure that m- when I go to the gym that my lifts, you're not always going to have the best motivation every single year or every single day or, or year, right? You but staying consistent, you will see results eventually over time. And so the gym back in there, the start of the year like that with, with work coming back in as well, um, getting back into the swing of things, that's what we're doing starting our year. Kids basketball starts back up for the winter here. Nolan soccer is about to start back up in a couple of weeks. So we're about to get busy again. So the break was nice. Uh, I'll be honest with you, from the podcast perspective, I just didn't feel like I had much to talk to you all about. And maybe I did, because here I am 13 minutes into the podcast, and, and I'm rambling on about everything that did happen over the last couple of weeks. But when you look at it week over week, sometimes I just don't feel like there's much stories telling to to go through. And I'm going to be much better at that this year. I'm going to be, again, talking about being more intentional. I'm going to be more intentional in writing things down during the week that I've either accomplished, that I want to talk about, that I've seen, that I've read, that I've experienced, and putting that into this this form so you all can hear. and, And because I do know that you enjoy it. If you didn't, you wouldn't listen. And I know I have... Um repetitive listeners and and I appreciate you guys so much that you are that interested in what I have to say Um, so doing that taking that break was good and kicking off the new year is is always good so you know what do we want to accomplish for this year the first thing we want to accomplish and I say we as me, me and my wife is 
we want to redo our kitchen. We talked about it at our New Year's party and everyone, what we were saying was on board. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, that's what you guys should definitely do here in the kitchen. There's no way of explaining it, but basically like we're, we're going to make it a little more open. Uh, the house is built in 98. And so the kitchen's just a little outdated. So we want to redo that. We've hired a designer. She's going to come in in the next couple of weeks and do a full walkthrough of the house, really help us understand, you know, do certain rooms have too much furniture? Is the design and the out, uh, the layout correct? Is it wrong? Could it look different? What is it? What does it look like, right? Because we've lived in the house now 10 plus years. We've accumulated things. We've become accustomed to certain things, and a designer is going to come in and hopefully be able to tell us, um, you know, how we can make it more inviting, more open, and not as cluttered, right? I think, especially for my wife right now, in her mind, it, everything is cluttered in the house. I look at it, I don't see it being very cluttered, but, you know, that's the give and take of marriage is I try and be as easygoing when it comes to the house because this is not the only place, I'm not the only one living here, right? Um, and I let her really run with a lot of the design. It doesn't bother me of how things look or what furniture we have or paint or anything like that. Like I want it to be a place that she enjoys coming home to from work, from what, you know, living in as much as we do. Right. So that's one of the things we want to accomplish is starting with the kitchen and also having the designer walk through the house and tell us, you know, some different changes that we might need to make from a layout perspective uh, to make the house more welcoming for everyone that's a part of it. Uh, from a family perspective, again, just talking about being more present. You know, one thing that I do want to say about myself, and I've talked about this in changing the mentality of things for me, is instead of saying I have to do these things, I get to do these things, right? Kids' sports are starting back up. My Saturdays are going to be busy again because they're both playing basketball and they're their games are at different times. We've already gotten the schedule wildly different times. So I'm going to be going to the gym twice every Saturday. Well, it's not that I have to go to the gym. I get to go to the gym. I get to go see my kids play sports like I did growing up. I get to see them be a part of a team. I get to see them learn. I get to do these things, and I'm excited about that. You know, my son's soccer, his competitive soccer is starting back up again. I get to see what improvements he made from the winter off, which he's been working on, to where he is now, right? And where he's going to be at the end of spring once the season's over. So, and then baseball starts up again in a couple months. And my youngest, Harrison, wants to play baseball again. And being a part of that, last year I got to be the assistant coach. And I really enjoyed that. And I want to do that again for him. And and doing that from a work perspective to end the year, it was crazy. Um, I was handed like five to six more customers to manage and have my team manage. And I don't see that stopping for this year. Right. And I, I I'm really trying to continue to be um, successful in what I do professionally and continue to push my team and be a great leader not a good leader. I want to be a great leader. I want my team to look at, you know, how I lead with them and hold them accountable and they hold me accountable and really be that that rock and that foundation that this group needs to drive forward and drive success for my company, right? So I've been with the company 12 years. This will be my 13th year of the company. I'm bought in. I love working here. I love the company that I ha I work for. And I want to continue to do that and continue to drive success for us in the industry that my team supports, as well as the industry that we as a company overall are in. Um, from this, for the podcast, consistency, being more present for it, making time for it, putting time on my calendar, whether it's before hours or after hours, if it's weekend, whatever it might be. I've talked about it so many times and I haven't done it in the last couple of years is getting guests back, whether it's my friends. I don't, I mean, it's anybody that's going to want to come on and have a conversation. Let's bring them in and, and have some talk and, and you guys, you all get to hear, um, different perspectives from different people. 
Bears Den Gym. Um, you know, it's now we're going to go into year four. Established in 2020, it's 2024 now. I need to make more sales. I need to drive more revenue towards the company. And if that's just not in the cards for me, then I'm probably at the end of the year going to have to really look and see if this is a viable, you know, side project that I can continue to fund. Um, So really looking at that and, and seeing if the clothes and the apparel that we make is really what the market wants. It's a very saturated market. Gym apparel, streetwear apparel is very saturated. So trying to make your impact and put a footprint down is difficult. So, you know, trying to see if I'm going to be able to do that. And if not, there might have to be some tough decisions in regard to, you know, where does the company go from there? And, uh, you know, those are things that I want to really accomplish this year is being more intentional, more, more present with my family being a great leader for my company and for my team, being more consistent with the podcast, really driving sales and revenue for Bears Den Gym. And then for my marriage is we're going into year 16. We'll be married 16 years this year, 17 years this year. My gosh, 17 years this year. Um, Sorry, Lindsay, for you listening and and me having a hard time doing math. But 2024, we were married in uh, 2007. 2007. 27. Woo! 2007. Um, Yeah, 17 years. And and making sure that my marriage is always my priority. Um, You know, making sure that Lindsay understands that I make our marriage a priority, she makes our marriage a priority, family, all of those things, and just making sure that, again, ups and downs are going to happen, especially in marriages, but that there's more ups than there are downs. And ensuring that and showing her and showering her with love and and being a better communicator is going to just continue to make our marriage stronger as it has every single year. I always... I. I I end my day with that is, you know, make your marriage stronger. Continue to make that bond grow even more than it already has. That's what I look for in my marriage, and that's what I want for my marriage. Um, those are very simple things for 2024, very high-level things. I'm not going to get into details because here's the other thing. I haven't really truly thought of all of my goals for the year. I have to really go back and look at my goals from last year and I need to see what I did accomplish, what I didn't accomplish and you know what is feasible and and what is short term versus long term and build from there as well as what do I really want to accomplish this year? I mentioned those things. What's it going to take for me to accomplish those things? I can sit here and say those things, right? Words hold weight, but actions hold more weight. Saying something is great, Acting upon it is even better in the right way. (laughs) Doesn't go for the bad things in life, right? Um, So I want to act on these things. I want to actually implement these things. How do I implement them? How do I drive more sales for Bears and Jim? How am I more um, loving to my wife every single day? How am I more present with my children every single day? You can say those things, but how are you going to do those things? And that's the things that I need to really write down and start really thinking about. So the question we'll we'll end with this was, on New Year's Eve, what do you want to start, stop, and continue for 2024? And again, the drinks were flowing, so I remember a few of them. I said, I want to start being nice, which was a joke, by the way. I am a very nice person, and most everybody that knows me does say that. But at the same time, me being a sarcastic, smart-ass kind of asshole in a loving way, hard to imagine that when you say that, it means in a loving way. My best friend Matt was like, he's like, bullshit, you're going to be nice. He's like, you being an asshole is who you are. That's why we like you. He's like, that's that's part of you. And so jokingly, I'm like, yeah, I want to be nice. Uh, I want to stop being fat is what I said. I don't remember what I said about continuing. Maybe I said 
you know, being fucking awesome. Because uh, again, I was just being a smart ass. But when I'm thinking about 2024, what do I want to start? What do I want to stop? And what do I want to continue doing? I want to continue to make health and the gym my priority. I never look at myself in the mirror. And this is me from a mentality perspective. I'm never satisfied. And sometimes I'm hard on myself about it, but I, I tell my wife all the time, she's like, oh, you're hard on yourself when you say certain things. I'm like, I'm hard on myself because that's how I motivate myself. I'm never hard on myself and be like, you know, how I joke, I'm like, I want to stop being fat. I don't say that to be like, oh my God, you're a fat piece of shit. I say that because I'm like, that's how I motivate myself. I don't have body dysmorphia, but I'm never satisfied with where I'm at. And I don't ever want to be satisfied where where I'm at because then that's when um, complacency sets in. So I want to continue doing that. What do I want to stop doing? I certainly want to stop so much of the heavy drinking. Having a cocktail with friends and family here and there is what I want to continue doing. But do I need to do binge drinking like I do and I fell into quite a bit this year? Certainly not. Um, time and place for it. Sometimes you fall off the wagon here and there, but I want to stop doing that. And what do I want to start doing that I haven't already? Um, you know, I want to start really continue. I want to start continuing. That doesn't make much sense, but I want to start really looking at myself as an individual and drive myself to be the best version of myself. And what does that mean? I don't know yet. And I need to really think about that and write those things down. And a lot of this, what I just talked about kind of goes into that, but that's what I want to do. So think about that for 2024. What do you want to start? What do you want to stop? And what do you want to continue? I leave you with that. Thank you for listening as always like comment, share. And, uh, this is my two cents worth. I'm your host, Ryan DeFaber, and I hope you have a great day.